good evening friends so i guess we can start so today's class will be how to approach cough okay uh, so approach towards cough I guess you guys are exhausted good evening friends so this session by two eminent professors and see now so please get back all your energy have kept the class very short okay we just have three case scenarios and approach to cough this itself is a very small topic so hope we can finish it uh, because i'm going to have a duty from tomorrow onwards thought we'll finish it of today only so I had to deviate from the time table okay let's start so what we have done is we have finished all the vitals examination and head to toe examination so you guys are well versed with how to approach when each of that will be a presenting complaint so moving on now have taken rs chapter so from rs cough dyspnea and hemoptysis these three are the most common presenting symptoms so we will deal with how to approach each one of them in our following classes and today's class it's going to be about cough okay so coming to the topic how we'll deal with it in introduction to cough history and examination investigations approach as to how to approach and case scenarios okay and we will have case scenarios throughout okay so let's begin with the case let's anyone willing to volunteer can raise your hand anyone 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 can make it more interesting and quick we can finish it off we can finish up by 9 if you guys volunteer fast anyone willing to volunteer okay pawan is willing to volunteer can you unmute yourself pawan yes sir yes good evening pawan can you introduce yourself sir i am pawan from jjmmc sir final year okay okay down get in yes sir okay okay good pawan how are you doing how is yes, the lockdown sir. going on <laughs> as usual sir how is the situation in davangere all fine sir i am in bangalore actually sir hometown okay then no need to ask about bangalore <laughs> it uh, comes in our news 24 by 7 okay fine so can we start with the case yes sir yeah so this case is about a 35 year old lady who came who comes to you with complaints of cough okay and she tells she tells it is from two months how do you want to go about this case so hopi okay good so hopi if cough comes to as a chief complaint what all you will like to ask in your hopi uh, so color consistency volume amount and uh, that is you are telling about expectation uh, uh, duration onset yes good see onset usually few examiners prefer few examiners don't prefer okay because cough as it is is a sudden onset it can progress so more importance will give to how the cough worsen in this two months because usually cough itself as a complaint is of sudden onset correct no so onset yes. not all examiners will expect uh, what accept it okay so we'll leave yes. onset onset you can tell abrupt onset in terms of foreign body and all in when something like that is there you can tell abrupt in onset but sudden onset insidious onset usually we don't use for cough okay pawan yes. yes so next comes duration with duration we can know whether the cough is acute or chronic correct no so yes, this sir. is for two months so what is it uh, chronic sir yeah when do you tell it is chronic cough uh, so more, more than 6 weeks maybe no more than 8 weeks is chronic for cough okay 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 sir. oh okay because if it is acute cough you will have a very small set of differential and one more it is easy you by giving to a symptomatic treatment it will resolve on its own so cough when it becomes challenging is when it's a chronic okay then we have a lengthy differential so that is why cough chronic cough is important to us and how do we diagnose it okay so duration of cough is for two months as mentioned next uh, type of cough type of cough it was dry side body is full of cough dry dry cough yes mm. Uh, for duration, sir. 
progression from two months it has been there and it is of intermittent type intermittent type intermittent cough intermittent paroxysmal cough mm. it comes in episodes and it is intermittent uh, aggravating and relieving factors okay aggravating factors what you would like to ask for oh uh, sir uh many uh, associated variation, no? so what variation. all variation you can, you will ask for when it comes to cough uh, on whether it's in- increasing on lying down or uh... yes okay it does it it is more at night not that it increases on lying down but it is more at night as yes, postural variation yeah there is no postural variation as such but at night time it is more yes sir hmm. Then, so the any associated symptoms relieving factors on any medications yes on taking medications it relieves so for the duration of time is taking cough suppressant it relieves again it comes back again it comes back so that is what the problem yes sir okay next medication antibiotics were tried but antibiotics did not work so antitussives were tried and it works symptomatic treatment it works but once stopping it comes back this is her medical history medication history next what you like to ask oh, any associated complaints with cough yes. associated symptoms associated symptoms she is uh, she has uh, night sweats also she has night sweats she has okay then yes. there is weight loss also weight loss also is present some amount of weight loss also is present in the past two months around 4 kg she has lost yes sir and night sweats is present next oh, fever 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 low grade fever is present low grade fever intermittent this also is yes. and mm. she has bouts of sneezes also this also she has so this is her hopi next uh personal history anything Post else history. you want to ask for associated symptoms uh, yes sir uh, any condition this, yes, this is what she has come with yes sir. we'll go to we'll go to uh, past history sir past history okay fine past history good so past history what all you want to ask if okay come what uh, whether uh, she was about uh, before hopi a case of cough isn't occupational history very important yes sir yes sir ha huh? yes sir correct no so she yes, comes sir. from a rural background and she helps in farming okay um, she helps in farming uh, with her husband okay this is her occupational history yes sir not that it is significant in this case but in every case occupational history is very very important when it comes to cough correct no yes sir yeah and exposure also an allergic history okay fine in past history what you last for no oh, so whether she had suffer from tb or no no history of tb is present anything else mm, no so any uh, recurrent upper respiratory tract infections no that also she has not had no any once in a while but come. it is not so frequent not significant to our case yes, any so allergic any, history you last uh, for allergy yes yes so no asthma is present no allergic history also present yes sir so next what do you want to do medication mm-hmm. history i have already told yes. family history nothing significant personal Personally. history sleep is disturbed sleep is disturbed because of cough because it aggravates during night yes sir mm. nothing as such no habits and all bowel and mm. bladder movements are normal appetite is good yes sir next so mm, exam in the mind what is the differential diagnosis you would like to keep at the end of history others also can participate to that uh, sir uh, one thing we can think of is tb so or any respiratory infections so it's a case of chronic cough first we'll it is a case of chronic cough with these associated symptoms with nocturnal aggravation okay so this much is important so what all you think pavan 
ஒன்னும் <laughs> so bronchitis you can have bronchitis bronchitis you can have okay allergic yes, bronchitis sir. you can have okay chronic bronchitis okay allergic bronchitis chronic allergic bronchitis you are telling yes, so if you look into the charts they are telling asthma so yes, you sir. should consider next asthma after upper airway syndrome then people are telling tuberculosis tb farmers lung yeah good farmers lung tb comes good Fa- then comes farmers lung very good since it is farmer pneumoconiosis is a very good possibility anything yes. else someone told vasculitis very good this also we should consider when it comes to chronic anything else mm, that's all that's all okay aspergillosis very good okay so this is this you, you can have a very wide differential diagnosis when it comes to chronic cough okay so that is what is challenging if it acute in onset either it can be allergic or it can, yes finally malignancy we need to think of there is night sweat and there is weight loss also very important so if it is acute they can either be allergic or infective and it results with symptomatic treatment it results on time so it is not that diagnostically challenging for us okay until and unless it's an emergency which you will have to diagnose that is that becomes prominent with the history It, yes, it's if it's got a acute coronary syndrome or foreign body inhalation that is fine that we can do it okay so next comes examination no yes sir so yeah examination examination general examination was fine vitals were also all were fine next what is next coming to respiratory examination correct no yes sir so respiratory system examination there was uh, okay. ronchi ronchi was present okay yes, polyphonic sir. bronchi was present polyphonic bronchi was present so that's all this was the no airway no other abnormality was present normal vesicular breath sound was heard okay sir added sounds polyphonic bronchi was present percussion everything else was wrong normal so this was the examination finding yes sir next what do you like to do uh, investigations uh, now you evaluate the patient because you still don't know what the causes causes so further you will evaluate good yes, what you will evaluate what are the baseline investigations you uh, like to do chest x ray sir okay first you want to do chest x ray imaging you want to do imaging yes. basic investigation in a case of chronic cough you will have to go ahead and do a chest x ray good yes. so chest x ray showed this what is there what can you make out in chest x ray sir uh, uh, m- m- multiple small nodules like hmm? air bronchogram more than air bronchograms what can you find where is air bronchograms i am not able to find okay fine one is increased bronchovascular marking is there marking. okay yes. increased bronchovascular marking is there something else that is prominent uh, perihilar millet like hmm? uh, perihilar uh, uh, some it solid it's just mark. not perihilar it is in various reticular opacities are there see reticular yes, opacities sir. are there it is present everywhere correct no yes sir and increase reticular opacities okay so this was here chest x ray finding next what you would like to do uh, ultrasound ultrasound why like, uh, ultrasound of what you want what are you thinking of like if next, there is any blood investigation look at your chat box 
CBC. Yes, CBC. CBC. CBC revealed differential HP was fine. Total leukocyte count was increased on doing differential. Eosinophilia was present. Eosinophilia was present. Eosinophilia was present. So this was your CBC finding. Yes, sir. Yeah. So next, stool examination. Someone is telling for OA and parasite. Sharanya is telling. Parasite. So stool examination was negative. Nothing significant was present. Okay. Mantle's test also was not significant in this case. It was less than 5 ml. Anything else you would like to do? So when there is eosinophilia, what all you will consider in your differential diagnosis with this much? Eosinophilia with this chest finding. Okay. Eosinophilia itself, what all you will consider in your differential diagnosis? Any uh, allergic uh, this thing, allergic yes. asthma. No, allergic bronchitis. Chronic eosinophilic bronchitis can be there. Then yes, we can sir. consider what else? Church stress, vasculitis you can consider. Good. So vasculitis, chronic eosinophilic bronchitis you can consider. Next, allergic pulmonary aspergillosis. Very good. Anything else that you could, you will consider? No, sir. Hmm? No, sir. I don't know, sir. You have put, no? Something very important. Parasite. Asthma. Yes, sir. No sir uh, st st stool exam no was plus. negative, so we can rule out that. Okay, still, you can have low flow syndrome. You yes. can't rule it out as such. ABPA, they have told. So, vasculitis, they have told. Chronic eosinophilic bronchitis and chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, they have told. But something very prominent in the history, there is nocturnal aggravation. With that, you could have come to diagnosis with the chest x ray. What is it? Very close differential to low flux. And with one more test, you can determine what it is. No, no, Ami. Is there something called tropical pulmonary eosinophilia? Yes, no, if we no, had no, done no. filarial antigen test, final and antigen test turned out to be positive in this case. Okay. Sir. So what is it? Finally, with that X-ray, chest X-ray finding, and with nocturnal exertion of cough, there is nocturnal variation. We we'll think of tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. Even though eosinophilic with eosinophilia with, with cough, there is wide variety of differential diagnosis. We can consider this, okay? And the first patient improved also with DEC. Yes, sir. Huh? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So hope all the audience are satisfied with this. Okay. So let's move on. Let's move on to cough. Okay. Thank you, Pawan. Thank you, sir. Hmm. So, okay, fine. With this background, so definition of cough, cough is a mechanical reflex involving a series of respiratory maneuvers, which involves deep inspiration followed by forceful muscle contraction against closed glottis. Against closed glottis, you will have forceful muscle contraction. Okay. So that is what produces the explosive voice as soon as the vocal cord abduct. Okay. So against closed glottis and sudden opening of the glottis. So this is cough. So what are the phases of cough? One, there will be initial inspiratory phase followed by compressive phase against the closed glottis muscles contract. So there is compressive phase and then suddenly vocal cords open. So there is explosion of air. Explosion of air is there. So this is the expulsive phase. This is where you hear your first sound of the cough. This is followed by recovery. And in few cases, very few cases, force this thing, vocal cords vibrate due to the extra air that is moving out that will cause a second sound that will cause the second sound this happens in very few cases okay so this is to do about the cough and the phases of cough so forced expulsion of air against forced muscle contraction against closed glottis followed by forceful exp expulsion of air which leads to this sound and as a whole it is a mechanical and a protective reflex so this much is important so next coming to the mechanism so what do, you, what do you guys think is the cough center in the brain? What is it? What do we refer to as cough center in the brain? Anyone? Hmm. 
medulla medulla it's in the brain stem so what is it okay let's see what is it so what are the peripheral receptors for the cough first what is the receptors that sense that there is some irritation or some foreign body or there is extra sputum which requires clearing it is the rapidly adapting receptors rars or c fibers okay these are present at the nerve endings so nerve endings will have this is something called as rapidly adapting receptors now when these get activated so the efferent nerve endings they carry the impulse okay so where all these receptors are present one is pharynx one is larynx one more is in the airway one more is in the extraocular membrane which is the nerve in the extraocular membrane which is the nerve that carries so that's why irritation of extraocular nerve membrane even while syringing there is there will be cough present yes which part of vagus now what is it called fully then comes the esophagus okay so vagus and superior laryngeal now will carry the impulse will carry this impulse after that it will go to brain stem okay and few of them go even relay in the cortex from brain stem it goes to cortex so even supra cortically it can modulate the signal it is arnold's now okay so this is followed by relay at the nucleus tractus alterius in the brain stem this is called as the cough center okay next what happens medullary cough pattern generator in the nucleus of plexus alterius will go to medullary and there is cough pattern generator okay this generates the cough and cortex has control over this and cortex has control directly over spinal cord and with this also there can be cough so the cortex can modulate the whole thing so what is the whole pattern of cough so initially there will be a huge inspiration followed by vocal cords will adapt vocal cords will close then there will be expiratory muscle contraction against the closed glottis so this will build a positive intrathoracic pressure up to 300 mm hg then there will be sudden release sudden release okay of the vocal cord okay because of laryngeal contraction after that what happens rapid expiratory flow which will lead to the noise production this is followed by the recovery phase okay next one more important thing is what is impaired cough impaired cough this is weak or ineffective cough so what happens the clearing won't be good enough because some part in this will be damaged the clearing won't be that good enough so what will that lead to that will lead to more serious infection that will lead to more serious infection as cough is a protective reflex so this comprises the local defense mechanism to clear the lrti or urti which predisposes to more serious infection so what can be the causes for this decreased expiratory muscle strength due to any cause like gbs or those things decreased inspiratory muscle strength chest wall deformity impaired glottic closure or any procedure like tracheostomy tracheomalacia leading again secondary to et tube insertion anything that that would of intubation that would of cause tracheomalacia abnormal airway secretions and central cns depression okay so this can be the causes for impaired cough next let's look into the causes of cough so cough can be acute or chronic acute is less than 3 weeks acute is less than 3 weeks chronic is greater than 8 weeks and 8 to 3 weeks being 3 to 8 weeks being the subacute phase they are being the subacute cough so acute means usually it is infections or allergic usually infection or allergic history like tracheobronchitis again it can be either because of infection or allergic then it can be bronco pneumonia then it can be viral pneumonia or it can be due to any parasitic and fungal infection acute or chronic bronchitis and pertussis we can think of so this being the most common cause next there is chronic infection chronic infection what can be chronic bronchiectasis and cystic fibrosis very prominent followed by tuber tuberculosis okay so this is what you will suspect infectious in etiology acute and chronic and each of them like tracheobronchitis or acute and chronic bronchitis can be secondary to allergy also or acute exacerbation of copd asthma something like that next coming to it can be either be pulmonary cause or extra pulmonary cause so extra pulmonary we can think of either uh, ent pathology like any middle ear pathology or upper respiratory tract involvement or it can we can think of cvs usually it will be cvs finally the most important being a grd so <laughs> these are the things so next let's look into airway diseases what can be the causes asthma eosinophilic bronchitis okay cough variant asthma chronic bronchitis copd and chronic post nasal drip 
post nasal drip can be again because of any ent pathology like sinusitis rhinitis nasopharyngitis all those things can cause a post nasal drip or a nasal polyp any of this next coming to the parenchymal disease proper parenchymal disease so this could be because of fibrosis or it could be because of emphysema or it could be because of sarcoidosis okay next coming to tumors malignancy bronchogenic carcinoma alveolar cell carcinoma benign airway tumors mediastinal tumors like that okay finally foreign bodies foreign body this comes with abrupt onset of cough so you will have the history of swallowing the foreign body or secondary to aspiration next is the middle ear pathology already discussed then comes the serious cause so serious what is the cause whenever there is pulmonary edema so it can be because of heart failure or it can be because of pulmonary infarction or it can be because of this aortic aneurysm which will lead to compression okay next is what are the other diseases among this most important is gerd gerd is the most important this can be followed by any reflux or micro aspiration or it can be because of certain rare causes like sutures obstructive sleep apnea laryngeal dysfunction and all those things finally drug history this is very very important especially in hypertensives they might be taking ace inhibitors which has led to chronic cough okay so these are the causes of cough next let's look into the history so first patient's general information occupational and environmental exposure very very important or it can be any old age lady she is coming with chronic bronchitis ask for history of something whether she they used to cook with firewood even that could have caused led to airway irritation chronic airway irritation which has led to bronchitis picture okay why ac inhibitors causes cough? why ac this is a very common question thought you guys knew it why why does it cause anyone in the audience something will be increased yes increase in bradykinin okay ac inhibitors will not lead to metabolism of bradykinin that will lead to increased bradykinin which causes cough okay so it leads to exposure to various irritants smoke pollution allergens okay all these things is sought for then again depending on age pediatric age group what all becomes important pediatric age group what all you can think of pneumonia or recurrent pneumonia seconding to some airway pathology congenital abnormality we can think of when it comes to pediatrics or it, asthma we can think of or bronchiectasis and its associated syndromes we can think of then cystic fibrosis we can think of so all these things being common in an acute bronchiolitis acute bronchiolitis all these things has more predominance in kids okay more predominance in kids so these are the things which you can think of if it's a pediatric case group okay mostly the recurrent cases you'll have to go look for some malformation some malformation so higher order investigations is required for that next is hopi so what all you last for in a case of cough this is really important first is onset second is duration okay next is and do not tell sudden onset if it is abrupt in onset just mention okay more than onset is change in frequency over time this becomes more important in case of cough then followed by frequency of cough and any variability if it is present postural seasonal diurnal all those things then comes any other associated symptoms respiratory and relieving factors pawan really good he went through each of these things he asked so that is how you need to be asking your history character of the cough and comes to expectation if it is associated with any expect expectation so if associated with expectation what all we last for we last for amount we last for character we last for color odor consistency and whether any postural variation is present and finally along with the sputum expectorated if there is any foreign body that is present okay and with all this history if there are any alarming symptoms if there are any alarming symptoms that requires immediate diagnosis and treatment okay so finally comes to complication so complication of the disease is different and complication per se because of cough what all can we have it can either be because any respiratory com complication like pneumothorax emphysema pneumomediastinum laryngeal damage all these things or serious complication which can be cardiac dysarrhythmias any loss of consciousness can be there subconjunctival hemorrhage can be there then comes cns that can lead to sudden syncopal attacks can be there because of large increased intrathoracic pressure it can go vagal stimulation it can cause this headaches any central cerebral ear embolism can take place musculoskeletal complications git complications and certain other complications so these are the complications which you can ask for if there is excessive cough okay so this is a part of your history okay so 
with this history in the mind with this history in the mind let's go to the next case okay so you guys will have to ask in terms of this so it's a practice for you okay so this is about a 13 year old kid who comes with complaints of intermittent cough since two months okay intermittent cough since two months so this is the case for you so we'll go about with this so this is how we'll go about in our hopi it's a 13 year old kid that's all so there's anyone willing to volunteer this is so we discussed it in detail because it requires now you know how to ask the history and all so let's go a bit fast now anyone willing to volunteer please raise your hand fast this is a good case very interesting case and common also commonly missed out case also so anyone willing to volunteer fast of you volunteer rather than me asking through the chat if you guys want it to be interesting any one of you raise your hands or i'll unmute myself i'm seeing aditya as i unmute you aditya do you mind since your name starts with a you are the first one in the list do you mind if i unmute aditya are you willing to volunteer okay fine none of you are willing to volunteer fine through hopa through pavan are you only willing to volunteer again or if i come from last someone if i i might unmute myself then Okay, Pawan. Pawan is only ready. Very good, Pawan. Thank you, Pawan. Okay, Pawan, I'm not able to find your name. Just raise your hands once. Your name comes on. No, sir, I'm unmuted. Yeah. So we'll just go through the same thing. So one is you'll ask for onset, correct? No. Yes, sir. So you you just keep asking what all points you need to ask. I'll I'll keep telling. Okay, we'll make it quick. so yes, it is it was not any abrupt in onset it was normal sudden onset cough okay next duration, one you like to ask for duration sir yeah so good you last for duration duration mm -hmm. it's been present from two months that is up, uh, uh, what obvious Tons. from the history that is what they tell next frequency sir yes good frequency it is intermittent cough okay it comes and goes comes and goes present throughout the day sir seasonal hmm? we can't uh, associated symptoms sir uh before that variability what all variability can you think of how all it can vary it can vary based on posture it can vary based on diurnal and it can vary based on seasonal so postural variation is not present this cough is also more in night more at night okay there is no seasonal variation it has started only now okay yes sir next Uh, aggravating symptoms. Aggravating and relieving symptoms. Uh, that one it aggravates at the night time. That's all. Nothing as such. It relieves yeah. as and when you give antitussives, but again it comes back. Any precipitating factors, sir? Precipitating factors, no. That one I told no. Aggravating factors. Yes. Hmm. Uh, then character of cough. Character of cough. It was a dry cough. Dry. Yes. Yeah. Break uh, cough. Then, uh, any ex expectation was there, sir? No, no, no expectation was there. Yes. Or some at times mild expectation would have been present, but not nothing prominent. Voice change was not there. Anything else associated symptoms you like to ask, Pawan? Yes, sir. So this kid, it had only cough. Cough was its only problem. Nothing else. It was or else the kid was doing very much fine. Yes. No, no dyspepsia was present. Nothing as such was present. Okay. Yes. So, what other thing you want to ask for? It the only complaint child had was cough. Post nasal drip was not there. That was not there. So even yes. on examination, ENT examination also no post nasal drip was there. Sure, yeah. Ear infections, allergy, no, no allergy was present. 
So next so, question is past issue. history. You will ask for allergy and all. Past history, what all you like to ask for? One is history of allergy was not not present. History of TB was not present. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, any medicine allergy? Medicine allergy was not present in this kit. Asthma or wheeze? No, no wheeze was present. No history of previous asthma was present, Sharanya. Any medical or surgical history? No, the kid was doing very much fine. One more thing you have to ask if it's a kid is any exposure history, anything that exposed and the kid started to have. Or since it is a intermittent os uh, onset, does the yes. kid get exposed to anything daily, which is which leads to the cough? No, but as such, that is also not there in this case. Okay, no TB contact was there, no pets at home. Oh. Anything else you want to ask, Pawan? Uh, That's all, no? Yes. So with this, what all you would like to keep in your differential diagnosis? What are the four things that should run on top of your mind? Just now we have discussed it in our previous case. Uh, asthma. Good asthma. Since it's child, uh, food yes, intake also TB. nothing as such. Okay, nothing. Asthma, upper respiratory tract infection. So post viral, it can be because of some three to four months back. Two months back, it would have had a viral illness, which the kid forgot, which the parents forgot to mention, and it can be a post-viral syndrome. Okay, post-viral yes. irritation that would have been present. Next, we we'll have to consider GRD in mind. Okay, GRD. anything else uh, that comes? Any uh, infection which is passing? Upper airway cough syndrome. Okay, that is yes. post-nasal syndrome. Okay, infection, chronic infection. You are thinking of good chronic infection. Okay, so these are the things which we can keep in a differential diagnosis. Correct, no problem. Yes, sir. So with this in mind, next we'll go to what? Uh, past history uh, examination we was. Yes, examination history. This kid surprisingly nothing was there. His ENT examination turned out to be normal. His respiratory system examination turned out to be normal. All other system examination was also normal. Sir, we'll investigate for uh, we'll take chest X-ray. Next, you'll go for investigation. So, two basic investigations that you'll have to do in a kid is not in a kid any cough that comes chronic cough. One is CBC, and, one is CBC, uh, and okay, chest X-ray if you want to chest X-ray. Okay, chest X-ray. Yes, These are the basic baseline investigations you'll not go for. Chest X-ray not in every case. If you're suspecting something LRTA, you'll go for chest X-ray. If it's a you are Okay, then no need. And a thorough ENT examination. Thorough ENT examination. Yeah, yeah. So these are the three things with an indirect laryngoscope and all. You'll have to look for thorough ENT examination. Ear also you'll have to examine. So these are the three things which you'll have to do. Okay. So you told chest X-ray. Chest X-ray was normal. Next you'll go for CBC. Correct? No. CBC. Yes, sir. Yeah. CBC was normal. ENT examination also. Even the sinuses, everything. No sinus tenderness was present. Ear examination was normal. Throat also on examination, nothing prominent tons tonsils were also not present. So even that was normal. Okay. So when everything turns out to be normal, no power. Next, what do we do is we'll go by this etiology. So these are the things which you have considered in your etiology. No. Yes, so these are the most common things. So you'll have to go for specific investigations for each of them and see. Okay. Yes. So post viral, it's a Finally, if nothing is there, then you can think of any idiopathic cause or post viral cause. So this will rule out. Night after ruling out everything, we can consider that and give symptomatic treatment. Okay. So indirect laryngoscopy, bronchoscopy also nothing was found. So next, what do you do? What all you want to evaluate for? Being a kid, first thing you'll go for is asthma. Yes. Sir. And upper airway cough syndrome. So these are the two things you'll look for. So. Considering this to be more difficult to diagnose and this to be easier to diagnose, this we will consider first, but by doing all the ENT examination, even the face sinus to examine the sinus x-ray was taken, that also turned out to be normal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next in the line in, is in the asthma. Uh, asthma. So what will you uh, think? Yes, cough levels. also is a good differential diagnosis. Adolescent age, psychogenic cough is a very good differential diagnosis. Good. Uh, what will you do for asthma? Uh, uh, IG is count. Directly do you go for that such higher order investigation, something simpler. This comes in 100 to 200 rupees if you are in private. Whether it is obstructive or restrictive, what do you 
for that what do you do uh, spirometry yes spirometry spirometry was normal spirometry was normal okay yes sir spirometry was normal next finally what else you can do for this your antibody tests were normal in this case uh Mm. They were mentioned in the chat. Chat. Shalini yes, has mentioned. Metacholine challenge. Yes, very good. On doing metacholine challenge test, it was revealed that FEV one decreased by FEV one decreased by thirty percent. So now, what do you tell? Is the diagnosis? Option two, this. Hmm. what is the di diagnosis on doing provocation test it turned out to be positive so what you call this is this is called as cough variant asthma okay this is common this is common also not that rare and very important to diagnose also because the kid responds the kid responds to normal asthma treatment the kid responds well okay on giving salbutamol and steroid inhalation the kid responds well okay yes pavan you did you get the case Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Records. Yeah. Thank so you. this was a case of cough variant asthma. There won't be any other clinical features. Cough will be the only finding on examination. Also, everything turns out to be positive. Most of the time, spirometry also won't give any results. On doing methacholine challenge test, it comes out. So very rarely this is done nowadays. Provocation test, but for diagnosing this one thing, we still do it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Yeah. So next. So we'll go with individual things. First was to identify the alarm, alarming symptoms. So what are the alarming alarming things you'll have to go for if it is associated with hemoptysis? Hemoptysis in detail we'll do in our next class. Okay. So then you'll think of malignancy, pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, lung abscess, TB, and all. If cough along with chest pain, dyspnea, and all comes, then you'll think of pulmonary embolism, acute coronary syndrome, all those things. Okay. If again cough along with fever, purulent. Sputum production. Then you'll think of infection, lung abscess, pneumonia, and all. If cough comes with unintentional weight loss, two things: TB should be on top of your mind, followed by malignancy. Then, if cough comes with shortness of breath, wheeze, and all, then what will you have in your differential? Acute, acute asthma attack, acute exacerbation of COPD, and heart failure. These should be on top of your mind. And these need rapid evaluation and treatment. Or else, the patient will deteriorate very fast. Okay. So next is onset. We should usually think of any abrupt onset like foreign body. We can think of. Okay. Next, as it is such, we can't comment on onset of cough because it is almost always sudden in onset. So don't mention too much on onset. Next is duration. So this acute less than three weeks. This is three eight weeks. Chronic is greater than eight. Very important. Okay. So the whole evaluation changes. Whole approach to cough changes on the duration of what the cough is. Acute is easy. It's either infective or allergic. So acute will be URTI or LRTI, pneumonia, any foreign body which is abrupt onset, aspiration in any old age patient or a neonate, CCF, pulmonary embolism, inhalation of any noxious chemicals or smoke which has led to irritation, which has led to local irritation and which has caused cough, any ear infection. Asthma or acute exacerbation of COPD and allergy. So these are the differential you think of if it is acute. Then comes subacute when there is residual tracheobronchitis, like pertussis or post-viral tussis syndrome. So there is some residual amount of irritation still present which is causing it. So this post-viral you will consider usually. Next comes chronic if it is greater than eight weeks. So this is when it becomes challenging. So on top of the list should be. post nasal drip syndrome or upper airway cough syndrome followed by asthma followed by gerd so these are the top things next will be any airway pathology like copd or chronic bronchitis you will have in your mind then comes other last which these are the top things you will consider then comes other causes some rare causes like bronchiectasis and if it comes in children it's associated syndrome young syndrome all those things then comes it can be a normal post infectious only but post infectious would have resolved by now or it can be a cough hypersensitivity syndrome where in the airway is hypersensitive hyper responsive to whatever you inhale so that will lead to cough okay or it can be normal idiopathic cough 
or it can be because of respiratory tract malformation or any fistula that is present prostop or in case of kids so these are the things which we can keep in mind if it's a case of chronic cough <clears throat> so next is variation variation is important one is nocturnal variation if it is nocturnal variation we'll have to think of chronic bronchitis left sided heart failure bronchial asthma aspiration post nasal drip and tropical pulmonary eosinophilia this was a case and early morning cough again we can suspect asthma if it is post food if it aggravates then we can think of GRD if it is seasonal variation if it is present it can be something like allergic bronchitis and all or again asthma next is positional variations if it varies with position then you'll think of lung abscess or bronchiectasis because the secretion will move which will cause or when it aggravates on lying down then you can think of post nasal drip GRD heart failure again bronchiectasis and acute bronchitis okay there will be more irritation in these two cases which causes more aggravation of cough then worsening over time what all you think of bronchitis bronchiectasis asthma heart failure lung cancer and interstitial pulmonary fibrosis so these are the few differential you can think of if it is worsening with time so next is respiratory factors if any respiratory factors like during or post exercise on exposure to cold air cold weather then you can think of asthma post nasal drip allergic rhinitis vasomotor rhinitis all these things then if there is positional variation which we already discussed nocturnal and seasonal respiratory factors we have discussed and sudden exposure to any noxious or irritant stimulants smoke occupational exposure all these things could be the respiratory factor so next is relieving factors so propped up position it relieved then you can think of grd main thing post nasal drip and heart failure if it is relieves with antihistamines then we can think of any allergic rhinitis sinusitis post nasal drip all these things response to antihistamine very well okay next comes character of the cough so this is a very important question asked in your viva external examination they'll invariably ask this first is dry cough so this you'll think of any atypical pneumonia pleural disorder any mediastinal disease all those things wherein there will be dry cough okay there won't be any secretion as such then comes productive cough productive cough the list is used like urti lrti bronchitis bronchiectasis tb etc all these things productive cough we'll see so further how to deal with productive cough then there is hacking cough which comes in case of smokers or then before smoking there will be a inspiratory sound sound that will be made that is why it is called as hacking cough then comes short cough due to urti local irritation will cause short bouts of cough next is brassy cough brassy cough is there will be a metallic tone to the sound okay so there will be a metallic tone to the cough so for this what it will be compression of the trachea by a intrathoracic space occupying lesion this will produce brassy cough okay next is bovine cough bovine cough in case of kids very important not not bovine cough barking cough that was okay bovine cough is because of loss of its explosive nature so cough will be present but very soft this happens when there is something pressing on to the recurrent laryngeal nerve as in case of tumors next is woofing cough over here there will be continuous bouts of cough followed by a woof okay the patient won't be able to inspire only so there will be continuous bouts of cough that is followed by one large inspiratory effort which will lead to the woofing noise that is present okay so this was woofing cough next is barking cough or barking seal cough this is present in croup okay next is spluttering cough in this why when we are swallowing food that time you will have cough that is because of a fistula that is present okay so tracheoesophageal fistula so this was to do about the character of the cough next what you will comment on associated symptoms so associated symptoms is nothing but based on etiology if it is any acute infection cough with expectation fever sore throat running nose all these things you will have any infectious cause so local infection along with ear infection and sinus infectious rhinitis all these things next is paroxysmal continuous attacks of cough this is common in petrosis next is cough with expectation hemoptysis weight loss means when it comes to infection you think of tb if it is cough with or without dry cough with or without fever then any atypical pneumonia can come and as was our case tropical pulmonary eosinophilia next cough with moderate sputum with slowly increasing fever probably viral okay if there is moderate amount of cough and the fever is present for a week and it is slowly progressing if it is a bacterial cause then it will be come cough purulent sputum and high grade fever will be present that is how a 
bacterial infection will come and if we come to chronic infection then probably bronchiectasis if it is bronchiectasis there will be large copious amount of sputum production okay then if it's due to airway malformation airway malformation will come with recurrent bouts recurrent bouts of infection infection cystic fibrosis there will be recurrent infection along with other git pathology are not present next is tb tb also can present with chronic cough so long term cough evaluation again we'll have to consider D tb also on top of a dish next comes the airway disorder for airway disorder on top of the list will be asthma so asthma what all can be there sensitizing stimulus like airway cold air any other allergen exposure all those things sensitizing stimulus will be there then cough with slight sputum production which is whitish in color next shortness of breath will be there with exercise or on rest also chest tightness will be there there can be wheezing that can be heard okay next there can be cough variant asthma which just now we saw usually in case of pediatric age group and only chronic cough will be the only presenting symptom next comes eosinophilic bronchitis this also chronic some somewhat similar to cough variant cough only. asthma only it also present with chronic cough there won't be any other stimulus there won't be any improvement also but the thing go here is metacolin challenge test will not work and there won't be any obstructive features okay so over oh, here this response well to inhaled glucocorticoids okay next comes chronic bronchitis so this by definition is chronic productive cough for more than 3 months for two consecutive years so this you guys will study in detail in copd so next will be copd and acute exacerbation not copd in obstructive disorders you will study in detail about chronic bronchitis so copd and its acute exacerbation there will be history of smoking or something other stimulus that is present chronic cough with mild to moderate expectoration with intermittent episodes of exacerbation so any stimulus like infection all those things will lead to exacerbation of the symptoms exacerbation of the symptoms which will lead to the deterioration of the patient next post nasal drip you consider post nasal drip syndrome will consider so it can come with cough there can be sore throat there will be which is worse during a particular season the so the sinusitis or allergic rhinitis which is there that will worsen during particular season so following a recent cold or flu it can come or it comes usually with clear or white sputum so frequent secretions in the back of the throat will be there which will lead to irritation which will lead to cough okay and it worsens on lying down okay presently post nasal drip syndrome the nomenclature has changed it is called as upper airway cough syndrome okay so next coming to the parenchyma disease if you want to think of one is emphysema which is covered in copd only other thing is history of autoimmune disorder smoking long standing dry cough dyspnea all these things are there you will think of interstitial pulmonary fibrosis if there is history of chronic cough dyspnea fatigue fever night So, uh, fever then comes uh, weight loss okay night sweats all these things are there multiple along with multiple organ involvement then you will think of sarcoidosis okay next is the malignancy part so if it is tumors again you will have similar features night sweats will be there weight loss will be there fatigue will be there chronic cough will be there as it there can be associated hemoptysis and previous past history of exposure to allergens any occupational history like pneumoconiosis can be there or smoking history will be present in case of tumors okay next is foreign body so foreign body and then you can think of cough which is sudden onset along with dyspnea will be there and on auscultation absent ear entry to that particular field also can be present wherever the obstruction where the foreign body has gone and obstructed usually common in pediatric age group or in case of semi conscious patient wherein they have aspirated foreign body while eating something next you will have to look for local ent symptoms uh, along with examination so ear discharge sinus tenderness tonsillitis all these things have to be sought for next is cvs most common causes heart failure so that will come with again dyspnea orthopnea pnd raised gvp edema fetal edema abdominal swelling right quadrant tenderness upper quadrant tenderness all these things will be present finally grd so patient might just come with dry cough grd also he might just have dry cough none of these symptoms might be present okay that time it will be challenging to diagnose or there can be certain associated symptoms like heartburn acid reflux worst worsens on lying down hoarseness of voice can be there overeating whenever there is overeating these symptoms might precipitate so all these things can be 
present. Next comes micro aspiration, old age bedridden patient can have smoker's cough, long standing chronic cough. This also again exclusion by exclusion, you will rule out this. Okay. Next, it can be idiopathic cough or psychogenic cough. Idiopathic cough, it can be due to normal airway hypersensitivity, which will lead to chronic cough. This is really good on antitussive medications. This one can, another one is psychogenic cough. This usually happens in case of severe stress, more common in adolescent age group. Finally, there is pleurisy wherein there will be, with cough while inspirating, there will be a shooting pain, small bouts of cough, dry, sharp cough, along with sharp shooting pain will be present in case of pleurisy. So this was to do with associated symptoms. Next is coming to sputum analysis, okay? So if it is productive cough, then what all you'll go for? Amount. It can either be profuse in nature or not. Okay. Mild, moderate, severe, not, nothing like that will be there, either profuse or not. Because when it comes to profuse, our differential diagnosis will narrow. Like it can be bronchiectasis, lung abscess. If there is any empyema which ruptures into the bronchus, that can be there. Any tuberculous cavity, which has again led to secondary infection by the bacteria, that can cause microtizing pneumonia and alveolar cell carcinoma. So this term bronchorrhea is specific to alveolar cell carcinoma. Most of the times it is because of alveolar cell carcinoma, wherein there will be copious, almost greater than 100 ml per day. That much amount of sputum will be expectorated. Okay. So next is character and consistency. So if it is serous, this is like your pus only. So this is okay. So if serous is clear, watery, frothy in nature, usually seen in bronchoalveolar carcinoma. If it is mucoid, again, it will be clear, grayish, white or black in color and frothy. This is seen in chronic bronchitis, asthma and all these things. Then finally coming to purulent and mucopurulent. This will be yellowish or greenish brown in color. Usually it's secondary to infection, bacterial infection. Okay. So finally coming to the color of the sputum, green or yellowish in color, it is bacterial infection. Black colored, it is in case of poll workers, pneumoconiosis, pneumoconiosis, aspergillosis, all those things. Rusty sputum, again, pneumococcal pneumonia. Red currant jelly sputum, it comes in our Klebsiella. This is, again, very important for your question. Next is pink frothy sputum. It is seen in pulmonary edema. Blood stain, in case of pneumonia, TB and all, it can be there. And coisos, when there is an amoebic abscess that has ruptured from the liver and entered the lungs. Finally, coming to the order, if it is offensive, then we'll think of lung abscess, bronchiectasis, and anaerobic bacterial infection. Okay, then effect of change in position, already mentioned, bronchiectasis and lung abscess, whenever there is change in position, the secretions will come out and cross. Okay, and rarely bronchopleural fistula. If there is presence of any foreign bodies, then we can think of, if it is cast, you will usually think of asthma. If it is any granules, yellow to sulfur, yellow colored granules, small granules. These are sulfur granules, which you see in case of actinomycosis. And if you find mucus plugs, it can be because of bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, bronchiectasis, all those things. Okay. Next is in the past history of patient, you will look for allergy, asthma, TB, any recurrent infection, recurrent ear pathology, tonsillitis, rhinosinusitis, all these things. Next is family history. Family history. Finally, mainly you will ask for asthma, any TB contact, cystic fibrosis, allergic history or atopy, and autoimmune disorder. So finally, drug ACE inhibitors, people suffering with hypertension, it is very, very important. Do ask for this, okay? People with hypertensive taking medication, never forget to ask for which tablet they are taking. Personal history, if it is nocturnal cough, there will be sleep will be disturbed and then comes or if there is positional variation again sleep will be disturbed exposure and weight loss so these are the things that is important examination we can't do, go into detail per se because we go into detail that will cover full respiratory system examination this is just to summarize you guys can read later this is taken from alagapan so summary of every disease and what are the findings which we can find but we can't do it in detail in this class at least we'll do it in some other class along with general evaluation, systemic examination, and ENT examination. So these three things are very, very important, okay? So this was to do with history and examination. Next is investigations. Investigation, as we have discussed in the case, we do usual baseline investigation, blood investigation, and along with imaging baseline being chest X-ray. Finally, if we still want to do, we can do spirometry, okay? So these are the normal baseline investigations which we are 
can think of doing they are cost effective also next we can do ct scan or other investigations other diagnostic evaluation according to our differential diagnosis and history we can go further and do so with this in our mind let's see how we have to approach a case of cough now you guys already know it you guys have approached two cases very well so first is thorough history thorough examination so on doing this if you find any alarming symptoms like fever productive cough dyspnea hemoptysis wheeze all these things this requires immediate evaluation and treatment okay so this will differ this is the emergency line of management okay so this is fine next we will see whether the cough is acute or chronic as mentioned earlier the whole approach will differ if it is an acute cough or chronic cough acute cough one thing is it will go off with time so symptomatic treatment and if we are particular that there is any bacterial infection is present after culture and sensitivity we can give antibiotics okay so with this the patient will improve okay symptomatic treatment like any antitussives simple ascoril is enough or if we want to add on any uh, antihistamine and all ascoril d all those things which you can for the, go ahead and give okay so acute we have discussed next comes chronic so that is when it becomes challenging chronic norm dry cough or chronic productive cough becomes challenging in that time what all we can consider at the top of our list should be wheezing uh, sorry at the top of our list should be asthma so if wheezing is present or any episodic wheezing is present episodic cough is present if not also we go ahead consider asthma and do the investing modalities like spirometry fe1 by fe uh, fe1 by fev ratio all those things which you are aware of the and the diagnostic criteria which are you guys are very well aware of you will go ahead and do that okay and you try to treat it with low dose corticosteroids and levosalbutamol inhalation so if the patient doesn't improve then nasal and throat symptoms are sought for okay so by because what do we consider upper airway cough syndrome or post nasal drip syndrome is the thing which we think of and we treat for this also we give antihistamines and ascoril we try levosalbutamol we try okay so we treat we try do the investigation and see whether the patient improves with this or not if still the patient is not improving then we can consider grt 24 hour ph monitoring endoscopy all these tests can tell us about grt okay heartburn and gi symptoms if it is there we can directly go towards grt if not after ruling out these two we can consider grt as the top of our list still if it is not there and patient is a smoker then we can think of smoker's cough which is a diagnosis of exclusion in the end we'll think of it copd malignancy all these things we can think of still no other rarer diseases which requires good evaluation as in case of tropical pulmonary eosinophilia we had eosinophilic yeah as the in top of our list and we went ahead and did a filarial antigen test okay so like that we we'll, if each thing can be if we our vasculitis was on top of our mind we could have gone ahead and done and correct no depending on the symptoms we'll go and evaluate but this are the common things and these are the common things which you will do similarly again diagnostic evaluation of chronic cough the same thing is being mentioned history and examination chest radiography particularly in case of smokers initial evaluation may lead to diagnosis of chronic bronchitis in cigarette smokers or ac inhibitors which is very important okay discontinue the things and try if it still doesn't work then go ahead and do further diagnostic evaluation similarly if post nasal drip is considered order ct scan or x ray of sinuses and allergy tests if it is suggestive of asthma go ahead and evaluate for that if it is suggestive of grd request for 24 hour ph monitoring endoscopic evaluation all those things and still if it is not enough if you have not come to a particular diagnosis then we can go ahead do higher order investigation like ct bronchoscopy all those things can be considered okay so this is how we do and this in brief about the treatment this you guys very well know just that symptomatic treatment of acute cough as mentioned already we can try a simple levosalbutamol for productive cough if it doesn't work try with antihistamine if it's still not enough go ahead do a culture and sensitivity if suspecting infection and treat with antibiotics so that is what is given okay for simple simple dry cough even chlorocodine and flocodine also can be tried if it is productive plain levosalbutamol works really well 
in instead of adding other things if the patient is severe congestive symptoms are present and all okay we can go ahead and give antihistamines but usually plain levosalbutamol itself is would be good enough so with this in our mind as you guys know how to approach a case of cough we'll do with this final thing <clears throat> so final case of a 45 year old lady who presented with cough since past 3 months okay so okay fine since anyone willing to volunteer can raise your hands or through your chat only you can ask through your chat only okay frequency and variation sharanya tells good so hopi frequency and variation hmm it is present throughout the day okay chronic cough which is present throughout the day and there is no variation as such anything else you guys will ask so what all you'll ask onset duration duration is already told onset you can't really comment about frequency and variation you guys have asked what else aggravating nothing as such no aggravating factors are present associated symptoms you guys are asking for associated symptoms slowly the patient is developing dyspnea also dyspnea also like on exertion on doing the usual activities which she used to do she used to get dyspnea there is no smoking history there is no exposure history there is no asthmatic history no other fever was not present no other associated symptoms were present anything else so you are asking about character of the cough character was a dry cough this was a dry cough weight loss was not present weight loss was not present night sweats were not present chest pain was not present no chest pain sharanya medication history good on giving usual medication also it did not relieve even the antidepressants were not enough to relieve like giving codeine flocodine at times it would have been relieved but no ac inhibitors she was not taking she was not on ac inhibitors not hypertensive past history you are asking past history also no no significant allergic history not a tb patient no exposure to tb nothing family history if you want to ask mother also had similar history and she passed away at the age of 55 years no shreya no precipitating factors so anything else you guys want to ask okay if this much is the thing then what is your differential diagnosis now no alarming symptoms as such because associated symptoms only dyspnea was present that's all no symptoms of any heart failure also even though it was dyspnea no other symptoms were present with this anyone what is a differential diagnosis you will consider okay good next grd also can present like this so what are the four things on top of your our head yes very good because it is just a dry cough and nothing else you can think of one is malignancy one is fibrosis interstitial pulmonary fibrosis female middle aged very good okay malignancy also we can think of so but the commoner things first okay so with these things you'll keep in your differential diagnosis okay yes good autoimmune also it can be alpha 1 anti trypsin deficiency you are going in terms of copd emphysema okay good that also we can consider so all these things were differential diagnosis good so next on doing examination on doing examination end ear entry everything was normal added sounds end inspiratory crackles were present end inspiratory fine crackles were present in this patient okay mother died due to similar illness if i tell you how did the mother die you will get to know the diagnosis ajit okay so yeah sharanya is telling okay fine now interstitial pulmonary fibrosis will come at the top of our head because it is a dry cough with end inspiratory crackles yeah ipf this will come on top still we can consider malignancy also can be considered or any autoimmune pathology leading to pleurisy that also can be considered but okay interstitial pulmonary fibrosis is 
at the top still we can consider someone told and from an antitrypsin deficiency leading to copd yeah that also we can consider okay so first we'll consider copd emphysema since this is more benign than this more commoner to we'll consider this and then interstitial pulmonary fibrosis okay but this would have still come up with some amount of sputum at least this would have come with okay so okay fine next is the investigation baseline investigation one is cbc you guys will ask for another one is chest x ray okay this is pointing towards lung pathology only so cbc and chest x ray cbc was normal chest x ray showed this this was your chest x ray so what is there in your chest x ray anyone want to comment on chest x ray if i comment you guys know the diagnosis i won't comment you guys should comment okay some amount of bronchovascular marking yes perihilar opacity just not perihilar opacification is present in the lower zone lower and middle zone there is some opacification that is present correct no so this was your chest x ray finding after this would you like to do anything any other imaging modality modality you will go since it is lung pathology you are sure of chest x ray is not that good enough yes stages very good you'll go for a ct okay this was the ct scan of the patient so with this ct scan you can only think of two things now what is this ct scan showing very classical this is signet ring appearance someone tells me it be because this can be normal bronchi only there is something else something very very prominent what is this what is happening see such obesity is no leave this don't look at the bronchi look at the something much more evident this bronchi is this dilated because air is not got getting in over here that's why there is ground glass opacification over here ground glass opacification is present over here so when you are suspecting interstitial pulmonary fibrosis with ground glass opacification in a middle aged female with no smoking history or no exposure to allergen what will come yeah usual interstitial pneumonia will be a differential diagnosis something else Mid this is a middle aged female there is no honeycombing also this is ground glass opacity there is no tracheal traction bronchiectasis also it is if it was usual interstitial pneumonia there would have been more traction bronchiectasis will be there there will be more honeycombing appearance they might be associated with smoking history can be there more common in male older age okay that will go in for usual interstitial pneumonia this is interstitial lung disease but non specific interstitial pneumonia okay so that's all guess we can wind up with the cough any doubts you guys can ask even on youtube so this was here today with the second class only first class and permit next week we will do hemoptysis okay so this week was about cough since in the google form which we had asked many had asked for symptom based approach so since we did vitals and via the head to toe examination we came for symptom based approach since you guys had asked for it we started with this okay yes that's all other doubts you guys want to go have dinner you know i'll go have my dinner so this you guys can contact okay sorry for the late class because of duty I had to put class today yeah okay fine
good night guys